So what is the difference between legal and moral justice? There is a very big difference between the two. And if you've ever had any dealings with the police, the FBI, the IRS, anybody from the clerk's office, court, judges, you know what I'm talking about. If you've been there and experienced it, or if someone you care about has experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who haven't done it or haven't been there, you might not know what I'm talking about because a lot of times there's a big out of sight, out of mind concept with people and they think that because it hasn't happened to them that it doesn't happen and that's just not true. So a little bit of a grain of salt here for some of you, but there is a huge difference. See, legal justice is justice served when the law is executed no matter what that law is, no matter how immoral or unethical that law may be, if it's been served, then there is legal justice. And that's the system that we have. It's not true moral or ethical justice. A moral or ethical justice would be a, cr a punishment that actually fits the crime or correcting a misdeed or a misdoing by someone someone was wronged and it was fixed that's justice but that's not what we have we have a legal form of justice an extreme example of this was germany during world war ii it was legal it was the law to turn in jews they were imprisoned they were executed and enslaved and robbed and everything else and you're like, oh, that's terribly unethical. It is. It's ridiculously unethical. But it was legal, which means that justice was served because legal justice was served. It was legal to do those things at the time. It's an extreme example, but it drives the point home. Three Stooges, Masters of Disaster. Big fan of the Three Stooges. I used to love watching that, the Three Stooges shorts. So how does that apply here today? Because every court system the world over uses a legal form of justice rather than an ethical form of justice. For example, is it ethically sound for someone who gets arrested with a couple of joints to spend 10 years in prison? You see, it happens. And I don't even smoke marijuana. I never did. I could care less. I don't even want it. But I don't think that somebody who gets caught with a joint should go to prison for God knows how long. It doesn't make any sense. It's not that critical. But the law says they can do that to them. So they do. Legal justice is served. Is it legal justice for, and I want to find her name here real quick. You can look this up for yourself and I'll, I'll put the name up. Eileen Battisti, Beaver County, Pennsylvania who had a $6.30 oversight on a state tax payment. I think it was a school tax penalty. It wasn't paid correctly back in like 2009. Okay. This is a widow with a handicapped child. They sold her house. Beaver County seized her property and sold her house for less than half of its value over a $6.30 oversight. And they said, well, we sent her a notice. She didn't get a notice because obviously if you, if they're going to send you a piece of paper that says, we're going to come take your house and sell it at a sheriff's sale because you didn't pay $6 and 30 cents. I think you could come up with $6 and 30 cents. She didn't know, but the judge said, oh, well, they said they sent a notice. <laughs> Tough shit. Perfectly legal. And justice was served. Is it ethical justice? Absolutely not. And it's absolutely immoral for everyone that was involved, the judge, the police, the sheriff's office, the clerk's office, the people at the tax assessor's office, they all screwed this woman. God, you'd think that somebody who worked at the tax assessor's office out of the kindness of their own heart would sit there and say, Jesus Christ, I'm not going to let this woman lose her house over $6.30. I'll pay it. But it's illegal for them to do that. <laughs> that wouldn't be justice, not legal justice. It would have been ethical justice. But that's not what we're talking about, unfortunately, because we don't have ethical justice.
biblical justice, if you will. We don't have it. We have this fake justice. She got that overturned eventually, by the way. It took a few years. It took a few years of court battles. And the only reason that it was overturned, quite frankly, is because of so much bad press. Beaver County looked like the biggest shithole on earth because of how they treated this woman. If she did not get the publicity that she did, she and her handicapped child would be homeless. They'd have thrown her out in the street and upheld their legal justice. Is it legal justice for someone to languish in prison for years and even decades for a crime they didn't commit? But it happens all the time. You can find a story at least every week in the news from someone who spent years and even decades in prison, and they were innocent. They did nothing wrong. There was a story, God, I think it was like two months ago. Am I wrong? I can't think of the, the name of the guy off the top of my head. I felt really bad for him. It was almost 40 years. 40 years in prison, and he didn't do it. Evidence showed he didn't do it. How many times has that happened? Evidence was mistaken or even falsified by police, by the district attorney, by the court. And they languish in prison. They're like, oops, our bad. We'll let you go now, 40 years later. And there's a compensation that's supposed to give you by law. And this is a new law, by the way. It's not that old. It's like a decade old, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, I talk off the top of my head. I rarely pull anything up. But that they're supposed to get compensated, I think, up to 100000 dollars a year for every year of their false incarceration which would amount to quite a bit for this guy for 40 years but number one you can't buy back the time they lost the time is way more valuable than any amount of money they could give him they destroyed his entire life ruined his family's life over nothing right and also they don't give it to you you got to take them to court to get them, this happens all the time, you got to take them to court to get them to own up to that law because they don't want to pay you. They don't want to pay you. And you got to take the state to court through the state. Good luck. And then if you're found in favor, they still don't pay you. And you got to go to court again to get them to enforce the previous order. It's a load of crap. But that's how they treat you. And they know they did you wrong. They know they did you wrong. Another example here, this happened in Massachusetts this year, I think it was January, right? January, where the district attorney's office in Boston was caught with over 24,000 falsified drug convictions. Falsified because of over a period of, I guess, a decade, I, I think it was a decade or so, through a certain laboratory, and it was Annie Dukin, Annie Duhan, Dukin. I think it was Annie Dukin that they blamed for it. A single lab technician. They tried to pin it on a single lab technician like everyone else didn't know, like no one else was involved, no one else had any knowledge. I really believe that. And so 24,000 people could be sitting in jail in Massachusetts on false convictions because evidence was tampered with deliberately tampered with and you can't tell me the DA's office didn't know this and didn't encourage it and the DA doesn't want to re-examine those cases because it's going to be too expensive it's all oh, you know how costly that is going to be oh we don't really want to and we're pretty sure about a lot of these cases you allowed for the falsification of 24,000 cases and you don't want to re-examine it I think they don't want to re-examine it because they don't want more people to get caught up in it because they found the one person to pin it on, that whole lone gunman theory they're always trying to create whenever something comes up. Same scenario. Let's just blame Annie. It's her fault. <laughs> we didn't know anything, we swear. More people are involved with that and they don't want to be exposed is what it is. But there are potentially up to or more than 24,000 people just on drug convictions and how many more in other areas and you know what they don't have to re-examine it because even though even though and I hope they do I hope there's enough 
pressure from the exposure of this, enough embarrassment that they're forced to. But they don't have to because legally everything else was sound. So guess what? Justice was served. It wasn't ethical justice. It wasn't moral justice, but it was legal justice. And that's the system that we have. And that's not just here in America. That's pretty much everywhere. It's a legal form of justice. If a piece of paper says you're guilty, you're screwed. And if we don't have a piece of paper that says that you're guilty of a crime, we'll invent one. We will invent one. We'll sit in a dark room in the middle of the night, a bunch of people from the town council or whoever they need, and we'll make a vote and we'll write it into law and then you're screwed so that we can get money out of you so that we can control you and so that you're too scared to buck government when the government does wrong or screws up that's what it's really about so that's the difference and I know it's a harsh reality and a lot of you people don't want to swallow that pill but that's how it is and when you've been on the receiving end of it I have in the past I've been kicked around by the court, kicked around by uh, police and other things, given a hassle, given a hard time over total BS. When you've been on the receiving end of it, you can see it a lot better. If you haven't been on the receiving end of it, I hope you never do have to experience it, honestly. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And that is the unfortunate reality of the truth between legal justice and and ethical justice, folks. Take it for what it's worth. Justice served when the law is executed. No matter what that law is, no matter how immoral or unethical that law may be, if it's been served, then there is legal justice. And that's the system that we have. It's not the IRS, anybody from the clerk's office, court, judges, you know what I'm talking about. If you've been there and experienced it, or if someone you care about has experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who haven't done it or haven't been there, you might not know what I'm talking about because a lot of times there's a true moral or ethical justice. A moral or ethical justice would be a, cr a punishment that actually fits the crime or correcting a misdeed or a misdoing by someone. Someone was wrong, then it was fixed. That's just big out of sight, out of mind concept with people. And they think that because it hasn't happened to them, that it doesn't happen. And that's just not true. So a little bit of a grain of salt here for some of you. But there is a huge difference. See, legal justice is... So what is the difference between legal and moral justice? There is a very big difference between the two. And if you've ever had any dealings with the police, the FBI, the